All right, so I have had uh, a couple of requests to um, have instructions for what I call the um, crab claw box because of the way that it opens. It this is just my little dummy book that I made for it. So it um, it's just a really simple little structure and holds the um, the book in with some pretty simple just some tension. Um, this is non-adhesive, the way that I have it, this sample. So um, yeah, so I'll show you how, how I did it. So um, this dummy book is three and a half inches square. And so my paper is um, two seven inch squares. So twice the uh, width of the book uh, doubled, um, and then plus a um, addition to the width that is equal to the thick. <coughs> excuse me, thickness of the book. So uh, let's see. What I did is made myself a little strip of paper that is equal to the um, thickness that I wanted. And I actually added a little bit um, to that. So I'm gonna put that on the edge and that's just gonna be my guide for folding. So I'm actually just coming up short a distance that is equal to the, the spine that I want on the finished box. And Sorry, my camera is in kind of a weird spot here, so I'm working around it. And then I'm going to open it up, turn it 180 degrees, and then I'm going to repeat that. And if you've done this before and putting a little spine on a piece, you'll know that on this second one, it wants to fight a little bit, so you have to, have to muscle it a little bit. Okay. All right, and that gives me my nice uh, square square spine. Then I'm just going to, um, as kids say, fold it in half like a hamburger. Uh, and then I'm going to turn it, take the top leaf, bend it back, match it up with that fold. I find matching things on the outside of the book so much more precise than trying to match things up on the inside of a fold. I see people do that a lot and it seems to work for them, but I, I find this to be a lot more precise. Okay. Then I am also, while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and take in, turn each of these corners down as close as I can to that, you know, I just really want a nice sharp, sharp edge here. A sharp fold here. I'll do that again. That's always a little bit futzy. And that's where, you know, something like a uh, cave paper, something that is a nice strong fiber that's um, gelatin size tends to really work well for this because it's strong but flexible. That's really kind of what you want for something like this. This is just kind of a run of the mill. Um, cardstock that was a little bit oversized so it's um it's not it's actually well not cardstock but it's like a laid laid cover weight uh paper okay so i'm going to uh what we call exercise the fold then i'm back and forth And then there's just a little bit of cutting and then we'll be done. And I apologize, I don't know if it's going to show up well in this lighting. Um, what I'm gonna do is, and actually I'm going to use a metal straight edge for this. Um, so I'm on the edge of the, um, center strip 
And I always like to just start my cut by having my tip right where I want it and then bringing that other side over to where it needs to be. It seems to be a little more precise that way. So again, I'll just put that tip right where that intersection is. And again, that tip there. So um, that's that. And then we're going to need to make a score mark. I like, you know, a nice cheap bone folder for scoring. Um, I'm going to use a 45 degree triangle and I'm going to back it up a little bit because it's easy to forget the, that that bone folder's got a little bit of um, thickness to it. So I'm going to do both sides on one. These are those interior triangles on either side of the portion that you removed. Oh, and I see that I totally did that wrong. So I will go back and fix it. You can see that I just grabbed the wrong one. So hopefully for demonstration purposes, it's not going to make, make any difference. Okay. <clears throat> and this is the tricky part. So what I'm going to do is just going to fold those in. One of the ways you can do this, you can fold it this way. And then you can pop those back up. Your goal is to have those so that they go up on the inside like that. So I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to fold it back only to there. Make sure I get the right one on here. And then I'll just turn the rest of that inside out. And then all I've got to do is just turn my two sides towards the inside. And you'll notice that you're going to have, um, you know, that thickness that's going to snug the book in there is just going to be on this bottom side. If you want it to be a little more evenly um, uh, put together, you can always just take those couple of pieces that you cut out and fold them, uh, cut them in half, fold them in half, and sneak one in each side underneath the flap. Anyway, there we go. So yeah, if you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email. Uh, but thanks for watching.